Thank you for listening to Life Worship Center, 1604 Golden Springs Road. For more information about our church, visit us on the web at www.lifewc.org. And now, today's sermon.
on all of our house this morning, I wonder, can we just all stand? Can we just lift our voice together and just tell him how beautiful, how wonderful, and truly how glorious is our God? Come on, if you believe that this morning, would you just give him a praise right now? Hallelujah. Come on, now lift your voice with us and help us. Alabama. 
I don't have the intelligence or the vocabulary needed to convey to you this word. But perhaps today as I stretch up, you will look up and find the hope that you need in God today. Amen? If I can say anything that would cause you to leave this place knowing that you are loved when you came in doubting it, then I have served the purpose that God has given me today. And the word of the Lord simply says this. And I'm going to read through verse 19. I'm reading out the New King James today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. First let me talk to you about who God loved. Don't you think that's important? When we talk about the love of God, isn't it important for us to recognize who it is that God is talking about? I know it's important to me. Amen? Amen. The word of God declares to us that God so loved the world. I've got a picture of our world. That God so loved the world. The Greek word, word cosmos is defined as the ungodly multitude the whole mass of men alienated from God and hostile to the cause of Christ. This is the world that God so loved. It doesn't say that God loved all the good guys. It doesn't say that God so loved the Jews. It doesn't say that God so loved the saints, but it says that God so loved the world. When God looked down upon the world from heaven, when he saw our planet earth, that he made that which is his footstool, he saw wickedness, he saw rebellion, he saw ungodliness, and yet he felt love within his heart. Imagine that. If I could play for you today news clips for as long as we've had television, news clips of murder and rape and terrorism, every kind of evil, every kind of ungodliness, every kind of wicked thing, child abuse and human trafficking, Everything that you can think of, now put yourself in the shoes of our Lord, that he sees all that, knows all that, and yet he says, I love them, I will die for them. The same God that said to you, love your enemies, he practices what he preaches. He loves his enemies. And he loved them with so great a love that he laid down his life for them. Amen. Who does God love? Everybody you know. Everybody you like. Everybody you dislike. Everybody you love to run into at Walmart. And everybody you hide from when you see them coming. Let that settle 
just a little bit. Christians wouldn't do that, would we? Everyone you've heard of, everyone you've watched, that's who God loved. Ride by a cemetery, every name that's on the tombstone, that's someone that God loved. Read the obituaries. Go far, as far back as they kept records. Everyone, someone that God loved. All of our famous and infamous criminals of all time throughout the history of the world, they were a part of the world that God said, I love so much that I laid down my life. Oh, we got to get this. Who? Does God love? Let's boil it down to the one thing that really matters. Who does God love? You. Me. If you can't grasp all that I said, grasp this. He loved Let's move on to how. How God loved. There was a conference held where they compared different religions. They had wise people and scholarly people. And they were debating about what was unique about Christianity in comparison to the other religions. And someone brought up the, the, the concept of incarnation where God took human form in Jesus Someone remarks that no, actually, there's other faiths that believe that God appears in human form. Someone else suggested the resurrection, the belief that 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 the death that death was not the final word. And, and someone brought up said, no, there's other religions that, that that talk about people returning from the dead. And while they're in the middle of this debate about how Christianity is unique to the other religions, a man walked into the room and his name was C.S. Lewis. And he had gotten there early. He was there for something else. He had walked in the room early. And he sat down. And he, he started to listen to the conversation. And he just spoke up. And he said, what is this discussion about? What are you arguing about? And everyone turned his direction. And they said, we're debating about the unique thing about Christianity. C.S. Lewis said, oh, that's easy. It's grace. And the room fell silent. Lewis continued that Christianity uniquely claims that God's love comes free of charge, no strings attached. No other religion makes that claim. After a moment, they begin to talk about it. Sure enough, they said the Buddhists, they follow an eightfold path to enlightenment. It's not a free ride. Hindus, they believe in karma, that your actions continually affect the way the world will treat you. There is nothing that comes to you not set in motion by your actions. Someone else observed that the Jewish code of the law implies that God has required us for people to be acceptable to him. And in Islam, God is a God of judgment, not a God of love. You live to appease him. At the end of the discussion, everyone agreed. Christianity dares to proclaim that God's love is unconditional. An unconditional love that we call grace. Christians, we boldly proclaim that grace has very little to do with us, our inner resolve, or our lack of inner resolve. Rather, grace is about God and God freely giving to us the gifts of forgiveness and mercy and love. God's love, how did he love? Unconditionally. Philip Yancey wrote, there is nothing we can do to make God love us more. There is nothing we can do to make God love us less. Psalm 86 and 15 says it like this, but you, O oh Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God's love has no expiration date. It has no limit. God's love is a love that gives. It is a love that gave. And let us take just a moment to talk about
about what God let gain. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave. And what did he give? He gave his only begotten son. He gave, if I may say this, he gave more. He gave, he gave all that could be given. There's nothing else that could be given that would be more than what he gave. He gave the most that could possibly be given. In other words, there is no, he, he gave everything. He, the, the highest standard, the highest prize, the most valuable thing in, in all the universe was given for you and for me and for this wicked world because God loved us so much. He couldn't give anymore. That's why the Bible says to us if God gave Jesus, how much more will He give us all these other things? Because He's already given it. His very best. He didn't need better. It was a love that was unconditional. It was a love that had no expiration, no limit. It was a love that forgave. Think about that for a minute. How did he love you with a forgiving love? And think about when he offered forgiveness. He didn't look at us when we were doing great and offered forgiveness. He didn't look at us if we saw improvement and offer forgiveness. He didn't look at us to see potential and offer forgiveness. He looked at us and saw the worst in us. He looked at us in the middle of our rebellion, in the middle of our pride, in the middle of our stubborn, wicked nature. And in that very moment, that very instance, he loved you. Jesus fleshed this out for us to see while he hung on the cross. Sure, we, we saw him forgive the adulterous woman. Sure, we, we saw him forgive the man who was, who was lame, who couldn't get up. The one they lowered down from the rooftop. And he said, would it be great for me to say, rise up and walk, or for me to say, your sins are forgiven? Sure, he forgave people as he walked through his life, healing the sick. But do not miss this. The most crucial time, the most painful time of his earthly existence, while he hung upon the cross, tortured, beaten, dying, right there, wicked people staring at him, mocking at him, spitting at him, cursing at him, all of this going on in that very moment, he uttered the words, God, Father, forgive them. Do you hear the heart of Jesus and how that he loves you? Pastor, I'm mocking him with my life. I'm rebelling him. I'm, I'm, I'm boasting about the wickedness that I'm doing. I'm, in, I'm deeper than I've ever listened to me. Jesus loves you with an unconditional love. While transgressions were taking place in his face, he said, forgive me. God has a cup of wrath. And every sin, every transgression, every ungodly thing that's committed, another drop will be added to the cup of wrath. You can go back in the Old Testament, you can see where some of the enemies of Israel, it seemingly God would not, God would just let them go on mistreating his people terrorizing his people for hundreds of years but then you would see where God would say the cup is full I've watched enough it's time for judgment to come upon them and God would pour his judgment out upon them the enemies of the people of God and they would be severely judged God had intentions of wiping them all out even though Saul did not obey God in doing that and so the cup had become full. So what I want you to see today is that 
every sin, every, every wicked thing, every rebellious, every transgression, filling that cup, filling that cup, filling that cup, filling that cup. But as Jesus hung upon the cross, God took the cup of wrath and he began to pour it out upon his son. At that moment, as he poured out the cup of wrath that included your sins, your rebellious ways, your wickedness, it was being poured upon Christ. And the Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin for us. And as the cup of wrath was poured upon Christ, it was then that Jesus said, My Father, my Father, why has thou forsaken me? He became our sins for us. But I want you to know today what's the wonderful thing in all the world that this scripture teaches us is that God poured that cup of wrath upon Christ until every last drop of wrath was poured out. And now there is no wrath left in the cup. There is no more condemnation left in that cup for me because I believe in the one who died for me because I believe that he's God's son because I believe that he loved me with such a great love that today I stand not in fearful judgment of the wrath of God but in great expectation of the glorious things that God has prepared for me as his son. Hallelujah. And when you get that truth that the cup has been emptied in Christ, oh, it will change you. It's the love that removes all fear. Zephaniah 3 and 17, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. In other words, God's love will calm your fears. Let's look at this last one. Why? We, we see who God loved. We see how God loved. Let's look at why God loved. Max Lucado says there are many reasons why God saves you to bring glory to himself, to appease his justice, to demonstrate his sovereignty. But one of the sweetest reasons God saves you is because he's very fond of you. He likes having you. He thinks you're the best thing to come down the pike in quite a while. If God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. If he had a wallet, your photo would be in it. He sends you flowers every spring and a sunrise every morning. And whenever you want to talk, he will listen. He can live anywhere in the universe. And he chose your heart. He's crazy. Why? He did it. He did it for why? He did it so that you could live. You see, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was with God. Everything that was, was created was created by Him. God saw Adam and Eve before the, before the fall or the curse. God knows what it's like to have a complete, intimate relationship with man the way it was intended. We live under the, the curse. We live in the fall of creation. We are redeemed people. We have not yet fully seen all that he's prepared for us. The creation around us, it groans, it's yearning for the redemption God will bring to even the earth. God knows. And God looks at the world we live in. And he looks at, at, at the world that is under the sway of the wicked one. And he yearns that we could be his sons and daughters and live the life that he meant for us to live. That's why. 
Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. And many in the church have been reading through the book of Ephesians. It's been part of a Bible study that we've been doing. It says this in 4 and 5. That God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead and our trespasses has made us alive together with Christ. He loved us so that we could live. He loved us so that we could come up out of that addiction that destroys, that, that uh, depression that depresses, that oppression that smothers you, that gloom and despair and fear that causes you to live in the shadows or live in the corners and not come out in the sun where you can enjoy the life that God has given. He has come to say he loves you so that you can accept it and believe him and have life more abundantly. You say, surely we have a part to play. Obviously. Obviously we do. If we could get a little music, please. I'll share this with you as we close today. If we read, read verse 18 and verse 19 of our text in the book of John chapter 3. He says, he who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. That the light has come into the world and that men love there's that word again. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Can we stand? You don't have a choice in the fact that God loves you. He loves you. You don't have a say in that. He loves you. No choice. No choice of yours. You have no choice. You do, however, have a choice as to how you will respond to God's love. Are you willing to step into the light of God's love? To have His light shine upon you? To have His grace overcome and overwhelm you. What I'm trying to say to you is you do not have to live in darkness anymore. There's an old song. I forgot who sung it. I want to say Waylon Jennings, but I'm not, I, don't, I don't remember. But it was a song that said, looking for love in all the wrong places. I may be waiting. I don't know who sung that song. I don't know. The song talked about going into the bars and looking for different faces and, and going to people that were strangers like they were friends, looking for love in all the wrong places. Sort of silly to think about it like that. But everybody's looking for fulfillment, for love, for acceptance, for someone to believe in them. May I say to you today, the search is over. The search is over. You can find love. In Christ. It's for you. So can I ask you today, and this is what I want to ask you today. Would you be willing to take just a step of obedience to say, I want to know that kind of love. I want to know that kind of love. Pastor John, I hear what you're saying. I don't feel loved. I feel like I'm shunned. I feel like nobody cares. I feel like people would rather go the other way when they see me coming. Pastor Jonathan, I, my parents didn't love me. They didn't encourage me. You might even say they abused me. 
And so because of that, I have a hard time thinking about or seeing God as a father that loves me unconditionally, even in the mess that I'm in right now. But I want you to hear me today. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. And the chains that have wrapped you up so tight, love, love will break those chains today. And you walk in freedom in a way that you've never walked in freedom. So if God, we don't do it like this every Sunday, but we're doing it today, because God's speaking in my heart to do it like this today. If the Lord is speaking into your heart, if he's drawing you, if he's compelling you, if you feel him tugging, would you just respond by faith and just come and kneel at this altar today? You will be joined by some brothers or you'll be joined by some sisters to pray with you. Seek God with you. You will not be disappointed. Give your heart to Christ today. When you do it, we're going to wait just a few moments. If God's not tugging on anyone, if he's not drawing anyone, if we all know Christ, if we all know we're loved, then that's the most wonderful thing. But I just have reason to believe in my spirit. If someone's here that needs this so desperately in your life today. Don't leave this place without activating your faith and trusting in Christ. Come on. This is your time to come. Thank you, Jesus. I want everyone else to be praying right now. Just pray against the, the enemy, his distractions, his attacks, his schemes, the thoughts that he will try to sow into this person's mind that would distract them or discourage them. Just pray against that right now. Thank you, Father. Give them boldness. Give them courage. Let them be brave in Jesus' name. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have a couple of fellows that come and pray with Evan today. Thank you, Jesus. Who would like to join Evan today? Come on, who else would like to join? Who else is in need of this love? It's unconditional, without limit, no expiration. Who else would like to receive? Who else walked in bad not knowing that God loves you? Come on, you don't have to leave that way. You don't have to leave that way. You can choose to if you want to, but you don't have to. Come on, you can get new life in Christ today. Old things are past, new things have come. Come on, this can be you. God's speaking to your heart right now. I want you to come and wait a few more moments and feel the, just the leading of the Spirit and He's speaking to somebody today. Be obedient to His Word today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, saints, just worship the Lord right now. Just give him praise. Won't you thank him that he loves you? Thank him that he loves you so much. Come on, give him back. Give back the love. Return some love to him today. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. It's not too late for you to come. The Lord is still speaking into your heart. It's not too late for you to come. Can we do this while everyone's got their heads bowed? We can continue to play music. If your head is bowed, your eyes are closed, I'm not going to call you out. I promise you, I'm going to call you out. But could you just simply, if you're here and God's tugging at your heart, and you're, but you're just going to be honest and say, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm ready. I, I feel that God is tugging. I don't know if I'm ready. 
just pray for me? Would you pray that God will make a difference? That God will help me to believe? Are you here? You raise your hand and say, that's me. I'm not going to call you out. I'm just going to simply pray. Is there anyone that would say that? Raise your hand and say, that's me. That's me. Please pray for me. I see that hand. I see that hand. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Father, you saw the hand that went up. God, this person feels the tug at her, her heart. Because, Lord, you know her. You love her. You care so deeply about her. God, the enemies tried to bring confusion. The enemies tried to bring an overwhelming anxiety and confusion and division that would keep her away from your peace, away from your love. God, today I just pray against the enemy. And I thank you, God, that perfect love will cast out fear. And your spirit is not a spirit of confusion. God, that you will give a sound mind, that you will give power, that you will give hope. God, that you will rise with faith and say, I trust in God. I trust in God. And that you would call upon me. She will call upon me. You will answer her. You will deliver her. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, can I get an amen for that? Amen. amen. Father, I pray for each and every one in this place today that struggle from time to time. Struggle from time to time. They have days where they wonder if God really cares. They have days that they wonder if God really does love. God, I just pray, Lord, for a new revelation in their heart and soul mind and spirit that you love them and it's not going to change that you care for them and that's not going to change I thank you for this truth I thank you for this power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior come on say amen, amen. give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise to God and the Lord Thank you for listening to Life Worship Center, 1604 Golden Springs Road, where we are proclaiming the way, the truth, and the life. For more information about our church, visit us on the web at www.lifewc.org.